Now, Bunny. Yes. This is going to be odd. Okay. And God, have you listened to this podcast? It's pretty odd to begin with over here. So me saying that the next bit is going to be odd means buckle the fuck up. <laughs> yes. Because this is going to be real left field, okay? All right. Okay. I'm ditching the script. And talking openly and honestly about my mother-in-law, her death, my father-in-law, and that whole goddamn story. Okay. Uh, real honestly, too. Now, Bunny, you already know most of this story. We have talked at length about this uh, uh, off off the record. So uh, maybe, so maybe you've actually noticed me uh, on the show, on the podcast, sort of tiptoeing around this story. Yes. You know, tiptoeing around the basic facts on the show. And it's, oh, so so what did you do for Thanksgiving? Oh, we spent the day at Papa's. It wasn't awkward. Let's yeah. move on. Anal catheters, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I try not to talk about it on the show, but there. But but it's not just. Uh, Nana, the story of Nana and Papa, there's also just a handful of topics that I tiptoe around and that I don't talk about for random personal reasons. And I want this pod podcast to be honest, painfully honest. So um, my in-laws, uh, specifically Nana and Papa, it was always Nana and Papa. We always called them Nana and Papa. Uh, we once tried to go with Papa and Nana. And, and all hell broke loose. No, literally, people were like, what the hell? It's Nana and Papa, guys. <laughs> it's not Oats and Hall. Yeah. It's not Garfunkel and Simon. It's not the Pussycats and also Josie. <laughs> you know? So let's let's start small. Let's start small in regards to Nana and Papa. Um, Papa is slightly cross-eyed. Okay. <laughs> One eye veers off a little bit, or sometimes a lot. And that might not seem like a big deal, but it is if, hey, there's a new movie coming out, and it, we're going to take Papa to see it. And uh, let's see, there's a showing at 3D, and oh, <laughs> dude can't see 3D. Yeah. Not if one eye is like going off to the side, you know? <laughs> but is he missing anything? Because I don't like 3D. I'm not a big fan. For whatever reason, I always feel that the 3D process just makes the film like 30% darker than the film would be if I saw it in a regular screen. Yeah. 3D always seems to make it darker. I remember seeing Captain America Civil War and feeling that the whole thing was dark. I remember the same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah. It's like, oh, this, this is dark. This is a dark film. And then seeing it in a regular theater and going, oh, okay, no, this is bright and colorful and neon and shit. Like, what the hell was the problem with the 3D? I think it's just the 3Ds fault yeah. you know also maybe he doesn't have cross eyes i was i was thinking about this i was thinking about this maybe it's not that he's cross-eyed maybe instead one eye has add ah oh, that's a possibility nobody ever thought of that before. be like maybe one eye is just a straight a student and the other eye just gets a bunch of d's and just has a hard time focusing yeah and the one eye is like focus jeremy and then Jeremy's like, I'm trying to focus, but oh, look over there, there's a rock. <laughs> okay, no, I'm focusing, I'm focusing. Yeah, no, eyes eyes on the prize. Ooh, look, squirrel. <laughs> okay, thank you, Maxwell. So, I moved to Sacramento in February of 2002, and then I pretty much instantly got entangled in a bizarre and occasionally violent love triangle. That took up 2002. Yes. 2002. By 2003, I'd given up on dating, and I'm like, I'm done dating because I'm just done. I'm done dating. I'm done trying to, I don't know, date, go on dates, find people, meet the one, yeah. and I'm just, I'm, I'm done with all of that. I'm just done. 
And so, of course, that's when I met Natasha. Have you ever seen the movie The Tao of Steve? Uh, yes, once. I barely remember. But yes, I did. In, in the uh, low-budget film from back in the days, uh, back in those Kevin Smith days where, you know, that was 50% of the movies in Hollywood were these low indie things. Um, Donald Logue was in that. Now he's Bullock in Gotham. And he was on that show. He was on that show grounded for life that I really, really liked, but, yeah. Oh, and he was on ER for like, for like a couple of years, but Donald Logue, um, he starred in the film. He was Steve. And this guy was trying to meet the one. And so Steve had his own sort of the dude sort of mantra on how to find the one. Yeah. And the basic, the basicness of the Tao of Steve is if you want to find the right person, you have to convince yourself that you're not looking for the right person. Because once you do that, you get this sort of confidence that will make you attractive to the one okay. that if you're looking for for romance if you're looking for a for a person if you're looking to date and find and meet mr right then the person that you're looking for will sense your desperation and be like no thanks but when you don't want to find someone is when you're going to find someone okay i see where that's going yeah so at first it was just a hookup. Like she would give me a ride home after work, but we'd hang out in her car and we'd talk, listen to music and then doing it. So, so literally I was just a hookup, but I'm like a disease. <laughs> okay. Or uh, no, 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 no. I'm an addiction. Like, like I'm meth. Okay. And people are How like, so? Oh, Oh, Hey, uh, look at Steve. I'm going to try him once. <laughs> Maybe twice. Ah. Then, then I'm done. You're gonna need to sit up. There's your... Okay. Then I'll be done. Then I'll be done with Steve. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I can kick him. <laughs> I'm gonna... Yeah. Thank you. I am messy. But basically, I'm Matt. Yeah. So when I was. So, so Tasha came under your spell and was unable to escape. Yeah, oh. yeah, I'm Matt. I'm Matt. Yeah. So when I was introduced to her family, it was an odd time. Okay. <laughs> Understatement. I, I I got the official okay to talk about this from from Natasha. So like I I wanted to talk about it, but I I didn't. Until I got the okay from her. So once I got the okay, it's like, okay. So it was an odd time to meet Natasha's family. Because at the time, uh, Nana and Papa were fighting. Because um, apparently he was having a secret 10-year gay relationship with their neighbor. Okay. It was, it was his neighbor? Yeah. Yeah. What? Nearby. Um, not neighbor, neighbor, but in, in the general vicinity, neighbor. Let's talk about this. Let me know what you need clarification on so you don't fuck it up. A 10 year relationship? 10 year relationship. With, with his best friend. With his best friend? Arnold. And bowling partner. His best friend and bowling partner. Bowling oh, partner. oh, I could write a whole gay yeah. movie about bowling partners turned lovers. Basically, <laughs> broke back lanes. Nice. I, I'm, I'm picturing but, the Flintstones, though. No? Wait, what was Fred and Barney really up to when they were going bowling? Yeah. Well, see, well, no, they actually did bowl. I went with them a couple times. But, um, no, what really, really tipped me off yeah. was when they went as best friends to go see uh, um, what is she doing? Hey, you have your own! Can you go get your own? Go get your food, Eleanor. Go get yours. Anyways, when they yes, went please. to go see uh, Quentin Tarantino's um... Muppet Babies? No. I, but in your mind, 
can you picture Quentin uh, Tarantino's Muppet Babies? Because that would be amazing. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just Meet the Feebles. Yeah. Um, what was it? What was the name of it? Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Okay. We went and saw Pulp Fiction together, and I knew that there was a. I knew, I knew, I knew Pulp Fiction. So, why would the my game? very yeah? Why yeah. would my very Christian father? Very Christian. He was raised in a very Christian household. Yeah. I scrunched your napkin. It's okay. Um, go and see that film. It seemed it's really against point. everything, you know. Yeah. But so yet, that was like a clue. Well, that and for Halloween, how he dressed as a gay biker. Yeah, that's also that's also a uh, yeah, like feather earring, leather vest, the fucking hat, the leather hat, everything. Yeah, the whole night. Yeah. So at the time that I was introduced to the family, I still there was how nobody else saw this. Yeah, yeah, there was yelling and screaming that and wasn't, that it, wasn't because fighting. Day. That was just ne- normal everyday life. Yeah, Nana and Papa argued a lot. Yeah. Nana had a hard time uh, f- finding her smile. Okay. Like, in my mind, I'm thinking of a. Uh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> so. I'm sorry. Event- eventually, they didn't get back together as much as it was like a ceasefire. Yeah. My mom fully believed even, that my dad was had given up his yeah, ways. Yeah, he, he, eventually, yeah, uh, he he was fully back, and, and uh, I'm going to be a husband. I'm going to be committed to this relationship, and and we are back together. And let me tell uh, all of you guys why I'm back because Jesus healed me. Okay. And uh, yeah, no, I I was gay. But I'm totally not now, y'all. Because <laughs> they healed me. And, um, yeah. Uh, so he wasn't gay. He was cured. Yeah. And so that was basically the end of that. And so throughout the years, you know, that was sort of forgotten. But it, I was, I always felt that I was the voice of like, Dude, just be gay. Yeah. Can't you just be gay? Like I kept thinking of um, uh, Kids in the Hall brain candy. Yes. You are gay. You are gay. You are a homosexual. The opposite of straight. You're gay. I know it. Your family knows it. Dogs know it. <laughs> Except you. So um, there were still signs here and there. Yeah. Like uh, um, the time that uh, someone who may or may not have been me ha- uh, found a, a, a profile on a site that may or may not have been for bears. <laughs> okay. I was 12 when I first learned about what a bear was. You were 12 when you first learned about what a bear was? I was 12 when I found out my dad was gay and I was the first person to find out. Wow. That's a big uh, weight. It's a big weight to have to carry. I um, thought he just came out recently, though. Oh, he did again. It, 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 yeah, he he came out again, but oh. there was a whole, there was a whole history, a whole backstory. So there was, was that was that to just get more coming out presents? Because well, that's no. cheap. When yeah. when I was twelve, I found my dad. Found out my dad was gay, and we didn't say anything to my mom because what the fuck am I supposed to say to my mom? Yeah. And that uh, eventually she found out about his affair like six years later, and then he committed himself to my mom, and he is a man of the Lord, and then they ended up moving out here eventually. I mean, we all saw the signs. Yeah. My dad's gay. That's not something that goes away. You don't get that cured by Jesus. Yeah. And so when he was out here, we knew that he was seeing somebody. When mom and I went to a Sensi convention, I think was it Los Angeles, Las Vegas, or was it Sniffcon? Sniffcon. That's that was, yeah, Sniffcon. St. Louis. Um, that's not the official name. That's the name I gave it for a Sensi family reunion. A Sensi family reunion. Yeah, Sniffcon. Yeah, when we were in St. Louis, Lauren, my sister-in-law. 
had told my mom that there was a strange car at the house. Yeah, she was going over to the house to check no, to see she how. Was passing by. Oh, she was passing by. I thought she was going over to the house to be like, "Oh, I'm going to see how Papa's doing." Oh, there's a car. No, there's she was there's a strange. From work. Yeah. And so there was a strange dude there. So my mom's known about my dad's boyfriend since they got together. Yeah. So it's not like, but the thing, the, the coming out thing, like everybody in the family knew my dad, for some reason, felt it was his responsibility to send a letter to every person in my mom's family. Yeah. Planning how, I don't know. I never read the letter. Apparently it was like, I, I thought I was gay. I'm really not. I found the Lord and I'm sorry. I cheated on Janice. And- oh, yeah. Um, oh, that makes all of this so much, so much more painful. Yeah. I don't know why he felt the need to do that because yeah. it's nobody's fucking business. Yeah. Nobody's fucking business. Yeah. Especially not that fucking I don't even know who they are. Who are they? I don't know. I deleted them from my brain because they're all assholes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm serious. A- my cousin Angel and I, we have selected, decided who to keep, and the rest were just mass deleting from our mind. Good. But yeah, so when... Nana and Papa both came from highly religious families, so the fact that Papa like came out and left Nana and went like full gay yeah. really pissed off massive members of both sides of the family yeah, and like, the big feuds when my mom was in the hospital in august and my dad ended up leaving her she kept telling me that the lord gave your dad to me tosh the lord gave him to me i said no mom he didn't because god this and you can't give people to anybody that's called slavery mm-hmm. that's not okay but she kept insisting they were meant to be together and he he the lord can change him back so change him back to what He's always been a gay mother. He's gay. He's a homosexual. He likes men. Yeah. He's you to produce children because it's what it was expected of him. There's no gay exorcism. There's no, <laughs> there's no like gay exorcism. I wish like, there was though. Yeah. Where like doesn't priest- that sound like a fun time? Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, and then finally, you know, that's when like the shit hit the fan, and my dad was just like done with it, and he wanted to finally have his life to himself yeah. yeah so and then my mom died that's where we are now yeah yep wow you skipped oh, so fine. much no that's great i was <laughs> gonna tell this really uncomfortable story about a toy i found in a bedroom but i didn't want to because it's really uncomfortable for me oh come on so okay so uh everybody was watching tv like i'm gonna assume it was like smallville or some shit yeah and uh but i wanted to see the new episode of south park because i had heard that it had a, that it was an anime themed episode and that they got they it, it, they redo the animation style to be a japanese anime and i was really wanting to see that so they said oh well we have a tv in our bedroom you can go in there and 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 watch it in the bedroom so i'm watching south park in nana and papa's bed and I'm like, I where's the remote? Like, I, I need to turn this up. And, you know, it's an old person's bedroom. So, of course, there's a small TV in the uppermost corner. Yeah. Like, like a hospital room, you know? So just a TV in the corner hiding in there. So I, I'm like, how do I turn this up? Let me look for a remote. Here's a remote. Let me turn this up. Oh, shit, I'm moving the bed. Okay, this is not the remote. <laughs> Maybe it's in here, and that's a giant rubber fist. <laughs> Hooray for Steve! Let's just bottle this up and not talk about it. <laughs> Something tells me this giant, massive, humongous, like Andre the Giant style rubber fist was not for uh, uh, poor Nana. Yeah. You know? She she didn't strike you as the rubber fist type? No, no, she didn't strike me as the rubber you know fist what? type. I don't think that's half as bad as what I had to go through. Oh yeah, it's not half as bad as what you had to go through at all. Um Okay, see Bunny, here's the thing. When yeah. my mom when my mom first found out about my dad, I had to I had to procure them books on how to, you know, be cured by Jesus by full affliction of gay. Uh, I also 
had to play sex therapist to my parents. How old were you? I was 18. You were 18 and you were playing sex therapist for... Yeah, I was I was uncomfortably trying to explain uh, to my mother the finer aspects of fellatio. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we should bring Emerald in here and she can help us with our sex life. You think that would make her scarred for life too? No, I'm pretty sure I scarred her for life and I showed her how to get a hand off. Anyway, My entire body stop. just went to sleep. <laughs> My entire body, like, ugh. Okay. Things you need to know. Uh, yeah, and, you know, so my mom would ask me pointers on how can she better accommodate my, my father's desires. Yeah. And I was, that depends on my, and my dad's, like, right there, and I'm just like, this is so uncomfortable. And I'm sitting there trying to talk to him, like, Mom, if, if Dad likes hairy guys, you don't have hair in places that he wants it like your 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 chest is not hairy you know you don't have a dick that's probably the main cause right there yeah that he's gonna be with you uh i just like it was really super uncomfortable talking about like anal stuff anal play and fellatio and porn I, i'd let them borrow porn videos i bought my mom a book on how to perform fellatio so that I wouldn't have to talk to her about it. My yeah. dad was uncomfortable. My dad and mom were uncomfortable giving me hugs. Yeah. Meanwhile, your parents are like, so, Natasha, tell me more about sucking cock. <laughs> These are like different universes here. Yeah. So, uh, that, I, like, Steve finding a massive fist toy um, in the bed yeah. is not as uncomfortable as what I had to go through. Yeah. yeah. You know, explaining toys, explaining basically sex, anything other than missionary, male, <laughs> female. I had to, like, school my parents, my mom, in. Yeah. At 18. Yeah. I was 18. Yeah. So, so Nana got really sick and she was in the hospital and she was just ridden and she couldn't leave. And, and Papa's just like, now's my chance. <laughs> being a bitch. Yeah, she was being a bitch. She was being a bitch. She was hooked up to all these machines. She wasn't happy. She was pissed. She was taking it out on Papa. And Papa's just like, I just tapped out. I'm done. Bye, guys. And she and he took off. And uh, uh, Nana was pissed and upset. He uh slapped her with divorce papers on their 40th wedding anniversary. No, he did not. The lawyer did. The lawyer did. Okay, the lawyer did. The lawyer did. And it it, it oh it was an interesting time for us because uh they uh, Papa and his boyfriend were going to run off and move to a different state. But they ended up not and they're still here. But uh they were going to leave. So they wanted to have like one last dinner with us. Yeah, with family and with the kids before they leave. So we met Papa and his boyfriend at the local Denny's. Uh huh. And 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 then and and that was an interesting time for us because we're like, oh shit, we have to tell the kids, don't we? <laughs> okay. Like there was there were parts that I was excited about, and I'm like, uh, Emerald. Uh, Sit down, we have to tell you something. Uh, Papa is gay. Did you know? I want to know. Did you know? You know? <laughs> like, there was an exciting <laughs> part of it. So I'm like, how much do you know? How much do you not know? I'm really intrigued by this. But then also, there's like, oh, we have to tell... We have to tell Maxwell. How do we... Like, how do we tell... How do we tell Maxwell about this, you know? Yeah. I got that. Oh, yeah. No, he took it like a champ. He took how, it like a how did you tell Maxwell? Because that shit is learned behavior. Yeah. Okay? Racism, sexism, homophobia, all of that. That's learned behavior. You tell him, hey, they love each other. That's all he needs to know. He's fine with that. You know yeah. why? Because he's a fucking child who doesn't know to hate. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Sorry. Hey. Hi. Oh. Yeah, that's Bunny. Say hi, Bunny. Hey. Oh, Eleanor. <laughs> I, I, Hi. I, Hi, baby. 
I snuck in a few more uh, Bob's Dirty Shorts onto her uh, playlist on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so Bob shows up and, Hi, and Bob's talking about how he's all woman. Yeah. And, and Eleanor gets all excited. I was like, oh, bunny, bunny, bunny. Hi, bunny. And then the credits come up, music by Liz a Day. And then Eleanor goes, bye bye. Oh. oh, my gosh. But now that's what she's going to think bunny is. Who he yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And what Tasha just said, it's a learned behavior. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Eleanor, you have a very sweet voice. <sighs> Eleanor is obsessed with uh, Inside Out and Secret Life of Pets and the Boss Baby. The Boss Baby. Yeah. I have watched all three of those films so many times. Uh, so, yeah. So now uh, Nana is dead. And Papa and his boyfriend are living in Nana and Papa's house. Okay. Any Anytime we go over to the house for holidays, because we were there for Thanksgiving, we were there New Year's Eve. Anytime, oh, Christmas, Eve. Christmas Eve, thank you. Every, anytime we go over there for holidays, I ha- there's like a pause, because I have to say, oh, yeah, I forgot we're going to Papa's. Yeah become such a habit of saying nana and papa's and it's it's funny we were going over there for christmas eve and maxwell could not stop himself yeah okay when we when we when when we go to nana and papa's i'm going to play oh i'm sorry papa and jr's jr is like a really nice guy but uh he doesn't know how to handle the weird long-haired Mexican. Uh So he engages in a massive amount of small talk with me. Yeah. Because, like, what else? He he, he doesn't know me from, like, a cloud in the sky. So he he has no frame of reference. He doesn't know my my deal. So anytime I'm over there, JR always just saddles up and he's like, so, Steve... How was how is the weather? <laughs> uh, how was the drive coming down? Was that uh, was that good? Yeah. So how's work doing for you? You you still at the bookstore? He's trying. He's, He's trying. trying. Yeah, that's what I was. Like, it's just it's just God damn! I hate small talk. And like, don't come and ask me if I saw the game. Don't like like. Oh. I, I want to, my words to have meaning, and I just hate. So, uh, uh, did you hear about the uh, the weather coming up on Tuesday? Like, no, no. <laughs> I, I just hate small talk. Yeah. Just pointless words that are only there to fill moments of uncomfortableness. What do you expect from him, though? I mean, I know that's been with this guy that's why I. Secret years and then he finally gets what he probably has wanted this whole time and his boyfriend leaves his wife so that they can be together and then boyfriend's wife dies and now he's thrust into his family and like how do you handle that yeah yeah that's why i prefaced that bit about jr with like he doesn't know me he doesn't know my spiel so like this is all he has is just these small talks and it's just it, yeah, I, I kind of hate pretty well though. Yeah. I just freaking hate small talk. I, I I have to keep reminding myself that um this relationship seems new to us but they've been together for years. Yeah. And so uh I have to keep reminding myself that when we go over for some holiday and uh we're at Nana and Papa's, but now it's Papa and his boyfriends, and they're like canoodling. Yeah, yeah, in this house, and it's it's difficult for me, and it makes me feel weird and uncomfortable to go to that house for any lengthy period in time because there's a lot of memories. And uh, let me tell you who else has a problem, Bella. Yeah. Oh my God! Thanksgiving, she was just uh. 
Like Steve Zissou after he lost Esteban. Okay. Like, like seriously, she was just like we were there and she's just kind of pacing around the house, you know, like a lion and she's all nervous. And I'm like, Bella, it's it's OK. I feel uncomfortable, too. You know, I think you and I might be the only people who feel uncomfortable, but it, it's OK. Are you all right? And she just says, it, it, it's fine. I just don't want to sit down. And I think if I'm like I she hardly sat down at all through all of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Because she just didn't want. To sit down. It was just uncomfortable to her. So then, so then like, uh, like, uh, Bella being Bella, she's like, where, where are the, where are the, where are the, the name tags? Where, where, where are the name tags? We always have name tags. Where are the name tags? And Papa's like, uh, I, we don't have name tags because they're pointless and stupid. Like, I always hated that. And Bella's like, but it's a routine, and we always do it. We always do it as a, as a family, and we need it. So she gets a piece of paper and a pen, and suddenly she's making everyone name tags. Yeah. Right. That's like, because she's like, because this is just what we do, and it's just, I, I have to do this, and we, we need name tags. It's Thanksgiving, and we need name tags, guys. No, so she's no. making name tags for everybody, but then, like, ha- like, near the end of Thanksgiving dinner, I realized, oh, shit. Nana's urns are on the mantle. She made a name tag for. Her. Okay. And and uh, and it's still there. Her name tag that Bella made is still right there next to her urn. But you know what I understand? What don't you understand? The name tag thing. That's something that we've literally only done like two the last two years. Yeah. But yeah, but those are. Ex- important years to a 12 year old but yeah that's the story of nana and papa hey i i got nothing else and there there's no there's no middle there's no end i just really wanted to get that off my chest there was an end for my mom. dang you and the nana jokes we're, we're Man. not gonna we're not gonna hear more about the douchebags from california oh the relatives oh jesus christ there's so much to do about, about about the the relatives? Uh, no, about the whole. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. No, uh, there's nothing to tell about them because they don't exist. Natasha oh, says. Okay. But yeah, some people accused Papa of like nanocide, basically. Huh? They accused my brother and I. Oh yeah, they accused Natasha and Natasha's brother and Papa and just everybody. Yeah, we killed my mom. Yeah. Because they're just such good Christians. Because they're good Christians. They're American Christians. Yes. Because American Christianity is different than actual Christianity. And so these American Christians immediately started throwing stones because that's what you do as an American Christian. Yes. Christian. Yeah. So that was a fun time. That was also the period. I had fun. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. And people just straight up attacking. Oh yeah, that time that that um, what happened, honey? What was it that like Bunny jumped in for the save, and suddenly the everybody loves Bunny because he's attacking somebody on Facebook. God, uh, that was I think it was my uncle. Your uncle? Yeah, talking about him, homosexual lover. <laughs> yeah. Attacking my dad. Yeah. And then Bunny's just, I'm on it. Type, type, type. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a fun night, and we were all just like around the computer, like refreshing. <laughs> Whose eyes? No, I can't see your computer from here, honey. I'm assuming it's a. Uh, oh, yeah, gotcha. Eyes are gray as shit. Yeah, yeah. Like a baby poop. Shit. Oh. Uh. If, like, yeah, right. his eyes his eyes are green like a baby's poop good to know good Oof. to know um Jensen Ackles yeah uh Dean okay Dean from Supernatural not Dean from Game of Thrones yeah Dean who's Dean for- not Dean who's Sam yeah 